Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing with you 10 mistakes to avoid when riding Amtrak. All right guys, this first one has not happened to us, but we witnessed this live <laughs> one time. We were at the Kissimmee, Florida station and a young lady missed her train altogether. Uh, it literally pulled up, loaded up some people and pulled away. And then moments later, she was like, the attendant came inside and she said, when is my train coming? And she said, it just left. <laughs> 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 because what happens is at some stations, there's only one attendant for the entire station. The Kissimmee station is a small one. And the attendant went outside just before the train arrived in order to load the luggages into the train and accept the ones for the people that were getting off. So she was outside just before the train got there and there was no announcement. We were all just sitting inside waiting. The train pulled up, but we happened to know that it wasn't ours because it wasn't the right time. And, uh, you know, this young lady was sitting there with headphones on and just doing stuff on her phone and she missed her train altogether because she wasn't paying attention. And that's a big one is you really do have to pay attention when you get to the station because not all of them make announcements or have big boards that have information of, a, you know, boarding and all that kind of stuff. You really do have to pay attention when you're at the train station. Yeah, she was expecting some type of like uh, announcement and then kind of a line to get in like like with an airline so if you've never ridden an Amtrak before it's not going to be like getting on a plane there's not going to be an announcement and then a long boarding process it's going to pull up <laughs> people are going to get on it may only be there for one to three minutes if it's not a big station and if you're not out there on the platform they're going to take off so uh, yeah that is a big one understanding how the boarding works on Amtrak especially at the smaller stations so you don't miss your train. <laughs> uh, the next one for mistake to make is not knowing that there's different types of train styles for the sleeper train. So there are view liner trains and super liner trains. I know the first time we rode a train many years ago, we didn't know <laughs> there was any difference, but there are two very distinct trains. The view liners go, are the trains that go to New York City. And the super liners are the ones that don't go to New York City for the most part. Uh, so those are going to be on the West Coast. The, the view liners are going to be on the East Coast. But the big difference is the super liners are taller and they have two levels of sleeping cars. The view liners are all one level. Yeah, and the rooms are going to be completely different as well. So your expectations for the rooms is also going to be important uh, to know which of these trains you're on. And you'll know which one you're on because it says it on your ticket. It will say super liner or view liner on it. So you know which one you're going to be on. Just make sure that you understand what to expect for that particular type of train. We do actually have room tours for all of the train all of the rooms on both of those trains so you can kind of get an idea of what they're like yeah we do have people that will comment from time to time oh i i was on the roomette and it wasn't anything like i saw on uh, youtube and they were comparing the wrong type of train to the wrong to the train they were on so just make sure when you go in with your expectations that if you're doing some pre-looking which you should do to see what it's going to be like pick the right type of train uh going in hand in hand with that though is not knowing when to check your bags because we do recommend <laughs> that if you're riding on a view liner train you should always check your bags to through to your destination like on an airplane because there are not luggage racks on that train and in the bedroom or the roomette there's a small space that can maybe fit one smaller bag but there's really no room for your your baggage while on a super liner we recommend you do not check your bags because there are huge luggage racks on the bottom level because that's the two level train on the bottom level there's huge racks and that'll accommodate your bags. Yeah, I think uh, you know the mistake that people make is they see the room tour of a view liner room and they see that little baggage area up overhead and let me tell you it's a really small space you could barely fit a cabin bag in there let alone a full-size check suitcase up there plus you have to hoist it up there yeah. which can be kind of wild it's gonna be hard to get a big bag and dangerous bag. we've tried it it doesn't work real well it wasn't fun uh next one is going to be uh 
expecting a certain type of meal on your train. So people will look at like Amtrak dining and they'll say, I'm going to get this kind of food, but there are several types of foods available. Uh, there's going to be flexible dining and that, th you know, there's also going to be traditional dining, which is the one that people are looking for. But sometimes if you get that flexible, it can be a big disappointment. <laughs> Uh, if you're expecting traditional. Yeah, and there's even one train that switches from one to the other. <laughs> yeah, it's very in confusing. The, in the middle of the ride, you wake up and the next day you are you went from traditional to flexible dining. So make sure that you're paying attention to you know where your train is going because that is what's going to determine what type of dining you get if you get traditional or flexible and again this will also be on your ticket um when it you know when it talks about food if you've booked uh sleeper accommodations it will say it on there but just know what to expect because your heart will be broken if you plan on having that flat iron steak and instead you're getting you know a warmed up sandwich <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that uh next one's going to be planning connections based on your train arriving on time. So getting to a cruise or getting to a flight or something that's very important that you're needing to do. And that's just never a good idea with Amtrak. They are almost always late. I just can't say that enough or loud enough. They're, <laughs> you're going to be late if you're going across the country. Probably 70 to 80% of the time, you're gonna be at least an hour late. So don't plan, and we've had this happen to us where we're like, well, we'll plan for four <laughs> hours. And we had a rental car window and we missed it by 15 minutes that the train just wasn't gonna make it. We were four hours and 15 minutes late. Didn't get our rental car, had to go to another location that was gonna be open later. But we've seen people with kind of bigger deals now, like going to a cruise the day of the cruise and Pretty sure they were gonna miss their cruise because we don't we don't know if they ever made it, but pretty sure they were they were pretty sure they were gonna miss it because the train was six to eight hours late, and that happens often. Absolutely, they were so stressed. As a matter of fact, I was stressed for them <laughs> because they were just so excited for this cruise, and we were just like in our minds, we were just like, why would you? plan to get on the ship the day of your arrival on the train. I know that it seems like it should be on time. Believe me, we wish they were on time, but they are just not. So just accept that reality and understand that if you are booking a train trip, you cannot have a set deadline for what you're going to do at the end. Yeah, even if we're booking two Amtrak trips, we always leave a day in between them uh, just to have an overnight in the city, which is always fun. But just to give you that time, because if the train is late, and even if you're connected through Amtrak, they will get you to your destination. But that's not necessarily going to be on the same train you were going to be on. You may be, get put on a bus. You may have to make some wild connections to do it. So it's just better always uh, allow for a lot of extra time when you're making connection. Uh, next one's going to be not understanding that all trains they don't all have observation cars. Yes, and I think when people see pictures or you know videos of people sitting in that beautiful observation car, the sightseer lounge, um, and just enjoying the views and chatting with other passengers, and then they get on their train and they're like, where's the observation car? There isn't one. <laughs> there isn't one on your train. Yeah. Okay, well, huh, I was really hoping that we could enjoy that. You just have to, you know, figure out is that is there going to be an observation car on my train or is there not and um you know that way you can kind of set your expectations for that part of the yeah. trip <laughs> so for the most part observation cars are there they are only on superliner trains and so if you have a view liner you're not going to have one but if you're on a superliner they're on the major sleeper car routes uh except for a couple of them and on the texas eagle you only have it for half the route but that's basically a rule of thumb, major supercar, superliner routes, that's where you're gonna find them. Uh, next mistake is not earning points because points are <laughs> such a huge deal with Amtrak. They're very valuable and you can get a lot of free sleeper car rooms just by earning points. Yeah, we've done plenty of free ones. We also have the Amtrak um, Guest Rewards MasterCard, 
but we, before we even got those, we made sure to sign up for their guest rewards program. It's free to sign up for it, so duh. That's kind of a no-brainer. Just sign up for the account, um, and then anytime you take a trip, you get miles for it. And then if you get the card, you can get uh, you know more points for it for using the card. And then on top of that, you know you start to get your your free ones. We've taken plenty of free rides on Amtrak just using our points. As a matter of fact. Uh, we did recently a ride in a bedroom on the Texas Eagle from Los Angeles all the way to Chicago for zero dollars. So that yeah. was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> this one, the sex one, we we were guilty of the first time because you just don't know, and that was showing up to the to the train station way too early. So this is not an airport. This is not a flight. You do not need to be there uh, three hours ahead of time. There is. No security line to go through. There's nothing. You just when the train shows up, you get on the train. Uh, that that's not gonna take very long. So, you know, still if it's your first time, maybe get there an hour ahead of time and check some things out. And if you're checking bags, you do need to be there early. Uh, you know, recommend an hour ahead of time. But other than that, it's a pretty quick process to get on the train. It's it's not gonna. There's no. There's nothing to do. So, you know, we show it up two to three hours early. People do that because <laughs> they're used to airfare or airlines. And then you're just kind of sitting there. Or the station might not even be open. If it's a small station, they don't open it too long before the, the train gets there. So don't show up, uh, you know, four hours early and expect to sit in some luxury station. And last year in you know, New York or Chicago, something like that, that's gonna be a really nice big station. So mm -hmm. you, if you have a sleeper car and you're there, you wanna show up even earlier so you can use the lounge. But if you're at a non-lounge station, there's no reason <laughs> to get there super early uh, because you're just gonna be sitting there or yeah. standing outside. Yeah, all right, the next one is booking a route that isn't named or is more like a mixed route uh, mixed service route. So this can be like using different named trains, putting them together or adding buses in. Um, that just becomes a whole mess and a disaster really in waiting if, if you can't work it out to be on just the one named train um, and adding in those mix, mixing it in with the, the buses or with another train. As you know, Rob mentioned earlier, there is a huge timing issue so that's going to add to the complication of your trip if you purchase a mixed service um, route as opposed to just one named route yeah so you'll see that when you're buying your ticket it'll either say mixed service or it'll say something like you know the texas eagle or like that so if you see a mixed service one take a good close look at it and make sure that's something you want to do because a lot of times you've seen people purchase that and it's like a 10 hour bus and a two hour train. And it's just, they don't always give you like the best experience. They give you, it's kind of a weird way that they order the results. It's not always the best one at the top. Uh, so just make sure you're looking for the ones that have a train name and not mixed service because you don't want to end up on a bus for over half of your trip. Yeah, and I think it can be tempting because a lot of times the mixed service uh, routes can be a little bit cheaper and you're like, ooh, that's like a hundred dollars cheaper Maybe I'll do that. Don't do not be tempted by it. That's, cause, that's <laughs> because you're on a bus <laughs> Exactly. Don't be tempted by it. <laughs> Nothing good's gonna come of it uh, Next one's gonna be packing properly for the train. It is a big mistake to not have the right things out You don't want to have to be going even if your bag is on a super liner Like we said, you can store your big bag. You don't want to have to go back to your big bag every time you need to get something or do something. So bring a little carry-on, a little duffel bag with you with the stuff you're gonna need overnight, everything right there, and you never have to be going back to your big bag. Exactly, we actually have a list of all the things that we bring with us or that are important to have with us on the trip. Uh, we have most of those things linked down below in the description. Um, and we also have made videos, packing videos, for you here on the channel as well. So make sure you check those out. Did one for packing your big bag, but most importantly, for packing your bag for the actual train if you're doing an overnight. So make sure you check those out 
here on the channel. Hopefully you have not made these mistakes. <laughs> if you have, tell us about it in the comments. If you have some other mistakes that you've made and you want to share, share those down in the comments as well. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like if you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.